It is a very strange feeling to be seeing Selene. Selene the terrible. Selene the outraged. Selene the put upon. Selene the fool. Selene lives in Maidon, on the fringe of Paris. He lives in a three-story 19th century wood and mortar house with his wife, Lucette Almanzour, and about half a dozen dogs, as near as I could count. His wife, he says, is the owner of the house. I thought you were coming tomorrow. I wasn't expecting you. I have it prepared. I thought tomorrow. Come in, come in. Those were his first words. He addressed his wife in French, telling her to take my quote, to get me a chair. He is a large man, but he is bent. He moved slowly, a shuffle, as if he were too weak to do anything else, to the other side of a large room that seemed to be a combination kitchen, dining area, and writing room. He sat down at a large round table, pushing to one corner and some of it to the floor, piles of books, papers, and magazines, and made room for us to talk. What is it that you want? Who is this for? I don't want a scandal. I've had enough. When I satisfied him, finally, he settled more comfortably in his seat. There is a good deal of interest in you in America. I began. He dismissed this with a blow of air and a wave of his hand. What interest? Who is interested? People are interested in Marlon Dietrich and insurance, that's all. How have you been feeling? Are you still practicing medicine? No, no more. I gave it up six months ago. I'm not well enough. Do the people here know you as Celine? Celine's real name is Louis Ferdinand de Touche. They know me well enough to be unpleasant about it. He gave no further explanation. What do you do with most of your time? I'm around the house always. The dogs. I have things to do. I keep busy. I don't see anyone. I don't go out. I'm busy. Are you writing? Yes, yes, I'm writing. I have to stay alive, so I write. No, I hate it. I have always hated it. It's the most terrible thing for me to do. I've never liked it, but I'm good at it. It does not interest me in the least, the things that I write. But I have to do it. It's torture. It's the hardest job in the world. His face is bony, gaunt, and it is gray. And his eyes are terrible things to look into. He was angry at the thought of still having to work. I'm almost 67. In May I'll be 67. To do this torture, the hardest job in the world. Gallimard, his publisher, recently brought out his latest book, North. It's about the Germans, suffered during the war. Celine said. No one has written about that. No, 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 no. You're not supposed to mention that, how they suffered. Keep quiet. Shh. He put his finger to his lips for quiet. It isn't nice to talk about that. Be still. No. Only the other side suffered. Shh. Among Celine's books translated into English are Death on the Installment Plan, Montacredi, 1936, Journey to the End of the Night, Voyage au bout de la nuit, 1932, and Gugnol's Bend. Céline had been accused by many responsible people of having written inflammatory and anti-Semitic articles and pamphlets during the German occupation of France. They appeared in a number of French newspapers and were reportedly reprinted by the Germans for consumption in Germany. His books, however, were banned in Nazi Germany. As a result of these accusations, he was forced to leave the country. He went to Denmark, where he lived for six years, but spent two of those years in a Danish jail. Why did you go to Denmark? I had money there. I had nothing here. Were you forced to leave France? Did the government tell you to leave? Did you leave of your own account? They tore up my apartment in Montparnasse. Who? Madmen, that's who. They tore everything I owned, everything I had. I was out at the time with my wife. When we came back, the apartment was destroyed, ruined, everything murdered. I went to Denmark. A few days following my talk with Celine, I met a former member of the French resistance movement who happened to have been in, on the raiding party Celine had spoken of. I was assured by this man that if Celine had been home when the raiders struck, he almost certainly would have been murdered. Why were you in jail in Denmark? I was a criminal of war. Were you accused of collaboration? I said a criminal of war, don't you understand? A criminal of war. I was not accused of collaboration. I was a criminal of war. Is that clear? You were supposed to have written things against the Jews. I wrote nothing against the Jews. Uh, all I said was that the Jews were pushing us into war, that's all. They had a fight with Hitler and it was none of our business. We shouldn't have mixed into it. The Jews have had a war of limitation for 2,000 years, and now Hitler has given them more limitations. 
have nothing against the Jews. It is not logical to say anything good or bad about five million people. That was the end of the discussion on this subject. Céline came back to France in 1950, after the six unhappy years in Denmark. Even when he came back, a great cry was heard from many quarters of the French press and from many government officials who demanded that he be further punished. Nothing was done officially, however, but from Céline's own inferences, his neighbors made it quite plain what they had thought of him. I had the feeling, sitting in Céline's kitchen, watching and listening to him, that in spite of all he said, in spite of all his natural crankiness and apparent loathing of personal contacts, he was pleased to have someone come to him, someone listen to him, and to ask questions of him, to recall the past, to show that he was not forgotten. People were still reading Death on the Installment Plan and Journey to the End of the Night. He was being discussed in spite of all the difficulties and the hatreds and the foul taste he left with many. If there is any kind of spirit left in him at all, and it seems doubtful, it is a spirit which says, I know what's the proper music, uh, I know the right tune, and they hear nothing. You once said that you couldn't read modern books, but they were stillborn, unfinished, not written. Do you read anything now? I read the encyclopedia and punch, that's all. Punch is not funny. They try to be funny, but they are not. Is there anyone whom you consider to be a worthwhile writer today? Before I could suggest anyone, he snapped. Who? Hemingway? He's a faker, an amateur. The French realists of the 19th century are a hundred times better. And he quickly rattled off a number of French writers, so quick that I did not get them. Dos Passos had a good style, that's all. How about Camus? I asked innocently. Camus? I thought he would throw the vase at me. Camus? He repeated, astonished. He's nothing. A moralist. Always telling people what is right and what is wrong, what they should do, what they shouldn't do. Get married. Don't get married. That is for the church to do. He's nothing. Then Celine volunteered the English novelist, Lawrence Durrell. A whole book about how a girl kisses, the different ways she can kiss, and what this means. Is that writing? That's not writing. It's nothing. It's a waste. I never had that in my books. My books are a style. Nothing else. Just style. But it's the only thing to write for. Who knows how many have tried to copy my style. But they can't. They can't keep it up for 400 pages. Just try it. They can't do it. It's all I have. Just style. Nothing else. There are no messages in my books. That's for the church. He blew the air and waved his hand, dismissing it all. No, my books will soon be forgotten. They mean nothing. Books don't change anything. It means nothing. I've been everything. A cowboy in America. A bootlegger in London. A shark. Everything, in fact. I have worked since I was 11. I know what it's all about. I know the French language. I can write, and that's all. Listen to the conversations in the street. It has nothing to do with books. Uh, it's always, then I said to him, and he said to me, and then I said, actors, that's all. Everybody wants applause. The bishop says, Yesterday I spoke before 2,000 people. Tomorrow I will speak before 3,000. That's religion. Look at the Pope. When people see the Pope, they want to eat him. He's so fat. He eats too much. He drinks too much. Actors. That's all they are. People are interested in insurance and good times. That's all. Sex? That's what all the fight is about. Everybody wants to eat everybody else. That is why they are afraid of the blacks. He is strong, full of strength. He will take over. That is why they are afraid of him. It, it's his time now. There are too many of them. He's shown his muscle. The white man is afraid. He is soft. Uh, he has been too long on top. Uh, the smell of stink to the roof. And the black, he feels it. He smells it. And he is waiting for the takeover. It won't be long now. It's time for the yellow color. The black and the white will mix, and the yellow will dominate. That's all. It's a biological fact. When black and white mix, the yellow comes out strongest. That's the only thing. In 200 years, someone will look at a statue of a white man and ask if such a strange thing ever existed. Someone will answer, No, it must have been painted on. That's the answer. The white man is a thing of the past. He's already finished, extinct. It is time for something new. They all talk here, but they know nothing. Let them go over there, and then talk. There's another song there. I was in Africa. I know what it is. It's very strong. They know where they are going. The white man buried his head too long ago in the womb. He let the church corrupt him. Everybody was taken in. 
you're allowed to say anything like that. And the Pope is watching. Be careful. And say nothing. Heaven forbid. No, it's a sin. You'll be crucified. But uh, keep it still. Be quiet. Be a nice dog. Don't bark. Don't bite. Here's your path. Shut up. There's nothing inside of them. They're all like bulls. Wave something to distract them. Tits, patriotism, the church, anything in the fact, and they'll jump. It doesn't take much. It is very easy. They want always to be distracted. Nothing matters. Life is very easy. For what seemed a long time, Celine said nothing. Finally, I said that I had never met a woman who was not sickened by his books. They can never finish them. Yeah, of course, of course. What do you expect? My books aren't for women. They have their own tricks. The bed, money, their own little games. My books are not their tricks. They know how to go about it. No, I don't see anyone anymore. Yes, my daughter is living. She lives in Paris. I've never seen her. She has five children. I have never seen them. A long silence again. And then... There's no doubt. I'm a persecuted man. I'm a leper. Silence. We open the door and an enemy enters. I have to quit, you know. I have to write. He walked me to the door.